gentlemen, boys and girls, RF Refugees Podcast, Ted here, John here, getting you set up on another Monday. We got DC United back. We're back, rocking and rolling, doing the things we do. Before we begin the show, John, John, I just want to say, it's hard to exaggerate what you have done for the profile of men's football in the United oh, States. Oh, thanks. Our women have won the World Cup. Oh, you're not World Cup after that. World Cup, but few American men have done more for the game than you Thank and you. me, of course. We're we're we're, we're all great. Uh, okay, let me just uh, drop. If you guys didn't get that, uh, just just go search it on Twitter. You'll find it. Probably everybody knows what we're talking about. The very weird and bizarre tweet that came out that day. I won't say who it's by. You can figure that out yourself. Uh, but John, can I just say, can we ta- stop talking about the growth of soccer in general? Like when you have multiple European leagues getting million dollars. I mean, we, we can talk about the. We can go more nuanced than that. We can talk about growth of MLS, growth of NWSL, growth of DC United Spirit. But we're talking about growth of soccer in general. I think we're we're kind of past that point. Mm-hmm. At the, I, I think I think we're well past that. Well past that point. Yeah, um, I think as long as you're not being silly and trying to qualify it against the pop like popularity of other things if it's not relative position it's inarguable that soccer's here right well i uh well i i thought um i forget who someone tweeted this out and i think they made raised a good point they said really what what we have right now is we do have five big team sports in this country we have soccer hockey basketball baseball and and, and american football of course mm-hmm. so th- those are the five big sports we, we can argue and debate probably about you know where does mls fit in with the other team big leagues i'm willing to have that debate but but soccer is the biggest sport in the country uh you know maybe not from maybe it's not as big as hockey from an english-speaking perspective but switch that language to spanish or any other language really that exists in this country and uh you will you will you will see uh you will see how much that popularity grows as my camera falls again that's good it's like it's it's uh, it's, it makes it more dynamic for the camera to fall in the middle of the episode. <laughs> Just watch it generally get closer to my face. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, all right, John. Uh, we got some uh, some soccer to talk about. Uh, first, first from we one got of our teams. We do for one of our teams. Yes. First, first we have some news, guys. Subscribe. Hit that Amazon Prime subscription. Drop it in. We had a lot of great. You, you unfortunately, uh, uh, Twitch makes you do it. It's also Subtober, I believe, is the maybe is that September. What it's S- Subtemper. Sub- I think is. It's some some stupid portmanteau uh, that Twitch has <laughs> conceived uh, for. But basically, if you want to subscribe, if you subscribe last month with using your Amazon Prime sub, do it again. Hit the same subscribe button. Click the box at the bottom of the thing that says use Amazon Prime. Uh, or if you want to just spend money, that's fine, too. You'll notice we took a week and a half off uh, and now we're back. So everything will be as it was before. Uh, we're back on our grind. So if yep. you like our grind, if you like watching this show, and hearing us, uh, you know, shoot off the top of the dome for many, many things. Uh, subscribe so that it makes it uh, it makes it easier for us to keep the show on the air. That's it for that. We're uh, we're, we're talking everything. We're talking. We'll, we'll be going right to the end of the season. There, well, I guess there actually is one more international break. It's mm-hmm. like in October, beginning of October. Well, then we'll, after we'll, that, we'll power through that one. We we'll just needed that, that one <laughs> to like just reset the batteries a little bit. We're back now. To reset the batteries, yeah, we'll have um, hopefully, hopefully, some spirit games to talk about at one day, point. or maybe we never just will. Maybe it'll just we'll just forfeit out. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Um, but let's uh, let's get into DC. Let's talk DC United falling three two to Atlanta United. Uh, do we want to do Chicago first, or do we want to go back? Oh, that's right. Shoot, I forgot to talk about a win. Yeah, let's talk about a win. Let's have some fun. Yeah, right. DC. We have. I forget we haven't talked about Chicago. Um, Chicago. DC United playing Chicago over the weekend in. Uh, at Audi Field, uh, coming to a three nothing victory, a resounding victory, a uh, a pretty like just just it was it was great to watch this team. I thought what 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 the more incredible parts about this game was just how comfortable everybody looked in this game, and, and just they they went out and beat an opponent that they should have beaten. Um, I think there's no ifs ands or buts about it. I think if you turn this game off at halftime, you were thinking it would be another seven one Toronto oh, beat yeah. down. And what happened was the second half was not. It was if you look at expected goals of the second half, it was even. I believe this yeah. was the statistic. But I think the highlight here is a we beat a team we're supposed to beat. Ola Kamara is the king of all goals. Gola Kamara is in the first place of the, of the Golden Boot, uh, and and no one got injured, and that was important uh, because the game this weekend was the one. I think I think we said last week. What did we want? We wanted four points from these two games, and we wanted was it. I'm trying to remember. Do you remember what, what our what our expectations well, I think were? I think I think four points was was a success um, for this game. And we'll get into a little bit of the Atlanta game and how disappointed uh, we're we're actually feeling. Um, 
um, about the team. But I think four points was what we wanted. Obviously, we wanted to beat the fire. We, we wanted to go in. You got to win your home games. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about why that's really important for this team heading down the stretch, uh, the, considering what they have in front of them, um, to, to go out and get maximum points in their home games. Um, but, I mean, I, I guess the, uh, the the more interesting part of the game is just that that first 15 minutes, I mean, it was just it was just all D.C., it was all DC. They were they were pressing. They were pressuring all over the place. And then um, they uh, Ola Kamara picks up a picks up a penalty, scores a penalty. So I think I, that almost like everybody's like going to talk about. I, I know the I, I I could feel it coming. I'm like you know when Ola Kamara took the lead in the Golden Boot race, I'm like he should be the MVP candidate. Everybody national media, everybody like no, he's not the MVP candidate. I'm like in what other dimension is he not at least i'm not even saying he should be the mvp candidate no. but there should be a conversation if, if the field is at least five players he should be in the field yes absolutely i absolutely. think that's right i mean uh, i think i said it on, on twitter when when we were engaging was it weeby that we were sort of talking to on twitter about yeah it, it was we it was weeby a little bit of weeby yeah, I'm, so, I'm just saying i'm just saying it's worth the conversation to have him and it, it's it's a it's a you know all of these are to a degree a popularity contest mvp is extremely so uh, so yeah, all we're asking for is him to be on the ballot. I think if he, if he is the golden boot winner at the end of the day and he might be just put him on the, put him on the little, the little graphic where you have the end of the year guys. That's all. That's all we're asking for. I, I think you have a good shout for, for Andy Nahar. I, I think Weeby was given, was given comeback the most player. likely for comeback player. I think that's, that's certainly, uh, that's certainly in the cards. Uh, and I think that's something you, you can think? definitely see. I, I think Kevin Paredes could, could get a shout for young player of the year, certainly. I think that's another one. Maybe that's slipping a little bit under the radar. Probably Ricardo Pepe takes it because he's got 12 goals this year. Yeah, he's probably uh, going to get it. He's probably going to get it. But um, I'm again, I'm, I'm talking about just conversation. That's all sure. I'm saying. I'm not saying he should be. I'm just saying. We're just to happy to be nominated, to, right? To, to, to <laughs> completely just say he should not be in the conversation, I think, is a little ridiculous for the player who has the most goals. Regardless if they're penalties, I mean, he still scores. I, I wanted to look up, like, what is the single season record for penalty goals in an MLS season? That would be was, interesting. Was Jaime the winner of it? Potentially, I possibly, late, late possibly. Career high <laughs> but I mean, to go out and get and to score seven straight penalties. I mean, that's 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 a feat in and of itself. The man yes, is supposed to... dripping from confidence taking penalties. <laughs> I swear to God. And, and I was talking to my friend Nancy about it. She doesn't she doesn't like the hesitation. I love the hesitation. Mm -hmm. It is it is maybe a little bit unfair because it's it's uh, it's similar to the uh, Jorginho like jump, jump, uh, jump penalty that it takes in mm -hmm. that. Unless he screws up, he's going to score basically. And right now, he he is he is a hundred percent. I see missed any this year. He might have missed one. I, I don't think he's missed a penalty. I think he's mm. been per a perfect seven for seven. I'd be curious if we get some stats on that. Um, but I, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember a time when when he was been penalty. Um, I guess some other things for this game. Obviously, getting the hat trick, two penalties in this game. Uh, Kevin Prades winning the second one. Uh, again, he looks really really good. I, I'll get into more. I want to maybe hold off on a little conversation on him uh, as we get to the Atlanta game because mm -hmm. I think I saw some interesting things uh, in that Atlanta game that we have not seen from him and that are that are make me really um, really excited about him. Um, but I mean, I, and 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 one other point I want to highlight from this game uh, was the save Bill Hamid makes in this game. This was a yes. three nothing victory. DC were certainly deserved winners, but this game was one nothing, and Bill Hamid makes the save that when we when when. When fans and people like me and you talk about how important Bill Hamid is into this team, it's moments like that. Moments where he keeps a team off a score sheet. He saves points for you. He keeps you in the game. Does things, And he did it against Atlanta, too. He had some very, very key saves in this game. In fact, I looked at his foot mob rating, and it's causing me to doubt the whole how foot mob <laughs> handles rating goalkeepers because I think he had like a 5.8 or something like that. Um, Except for the Kempen score, we will agree that for the fours were deserved for Kempen. <laughs> that one game was was probably it was probably right, but I think it's causing me to just because a goalkeeper gets scored on doesn't mean correct. Uh, we'll get into that. We'll get into that into a minute. But he makes the save in the Chicago game with his foot, and right DC goes right back the other way and scores a goal. And it, and really at that point, that game is over. Like I was like two nothing. This is over. Uh, Chicago is not coming back. They are already a broken team. Like they are a bad team. DC is taking care of business. Obviously, Olivin gets the hat trick. Uh, Felt a little bad for Paul Ariola that he didn't get a, a rocket goal that could have yes. could have potentially been a been a goal of the week nominee. Um, but uh, Gressel, I thought, was also strong. Obviously, had the had the assist on the goal. Finally, his like expected assist numbers versus like his actual assist numbers are like are crazy. They are. Uh, so ho hopefully that kind of 
kind of comes be. Uh, I like seeing Ola score from open play off a header like that too. And it was not an yeah. easy header. He wasn't marked very well, but the angle was a challenge for him to put it in that corner. So, and also producer Brian on the uh, Johnny on the spot here, seven for seven uh, penalties for Ola this year. So Ted yep. was right. Not, not missed yet from the spot knock on. I, I want to uh, producer Brian, if you can find me the stat for the most penalty goals, from a single player in an MLS season, I'd be curious to see if Ola can, can break that stat. Landon, Jeff Cunningham, or uh, or Jaime, or, or or Jaime, Jaime potentially Jaime, one of those three. <laughs> potentially, uh, we do have a caller. Uh, unless John, before we get out, do you want to have anything you want to touch on the game? No, I just I, I was hoping I wanted Ola to score the Texas hat trick. I wanted him to go. I wanted him to start like another fifteen minutes because, uh, and and we'll talk about this in the Atlanta game. Uh, the cupboard is is pretty bare at attack, so I guess it made sense to. One, you know you got the three points in the bag. Protect your most valuable resource, which is the golden boot winner from a player that you don't have any depth on uh, or very limited depth on. Uh, but uh, really, we like when this team handles business at home when it does uh, when it does what it's supposed to do. Uh, and I think that the Arnon was Arnon was he was happy about this game. He was, I think, almost happier with the Atlanta loss. Uh, and we'll talk we'll talk about sort of how how he felt about his team fighting. Uh, but overall. Uh, you know, three points out of a potential six starting coming into the weekend last weekend. We'll, we'll talk with the other one. Angus, my friend, uh, let's let's talk about, D, I assume, just DC United in general. What do you got? What do you got cooking for us? Hey, guys, can you guys hear me? We can. Yep. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's been a uh, it's been a weird week, I guess. The ups and downs have been uh, pretty harsh uh, when you think about it, um, especially considering how I think we played very well against Atlanta. I think the scoreline doesn't necessarily reflect that. Um, I, I think that there were some possible uh, personnel choices that could have been a little bit better from the jump. I don't necessarily think Drew is a uh, starter, but I think he's a great substitute and a great uh, Swiss Army knife, um, similar to Ulysses Segura last year, um, if you kind of want to put like a mold on him, right? Um, but the 3 nothing game was great at midweek. Um, I was there. And it was uh, it was good. It was a good atmosphere for a Wednesday game. It, it's been it's it's weird because you know Angus. I Angus, the, before we continue, before we continue, before we continue yeah. you were there, and you know why we know you were there is because you got a lot of love for everywhere. your two pole. I was everywhere. You yeah. got you got yeah. love for your. Yeah. <laughs> you had a very very cool yeah. Ernan Masada driver's license two pole that uh, both Claudia Pagan and Ernan himself uh, shared on Instagram. So congrats, yep. <laughs> congrats to you on that. Yeah, it was a, that was a, a wild uh, a wild couple of days there. I, I need to um, I need to take more time to make those in the future. That's for Apparently. sure. I need to have a better like plan. Um, it was fun. Uh, a lot of team effort there. It wasn't just me who made that. It was a it was a group effort over a, a really kind of whirlwind couple of days. So to everybody who helped me with that, thank you very much. But you know, more important, let's talk about the soccer. That's why everybody's here in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, Saturday, uh, I was very excited. National television was finally, it was like, we can finally try to get some of that respect back because, you know, we've got Weeby in our mentions pretty much telling us that DC <laughs> isn't anything. Hernan Losada shouldn't be in the conversation for coach of the year because, well, Bruce Arena is just going to walk away with it because, you know, nobody can ever do anything good as long as it's, if, if it's got DC United attached to it, right? Um, you know, and, and, and you can complain about the refereeing and, and the commentators and, and that stuff that there was definite issues, especially I think with some of the officiating, when you finish a game with 25 to eight in fouls, uh, I don't necessarily know if that's reflective of DC playing that dirty or the calls not necessarily going a hundred percent in one team or another's favor, but I'm not one to comment on that because I'm not an official like Ted. So <laughs> what do you have to say about that? Uh, about about the officiating? Talking about the officiating of yeah. the uh, the Atlanta game? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I am not one of those people who likes to to get into arguments over when this team has more fouls. You know, the call it both ways crowd. I'm like, well, if you have one team that is playing more physical, 
uh, you're going to immediately have more fouls. Uh, the, the disparity was a little ridiculous. And I guess the one moment I remember it was DC getting called for basically anything, basically for, for breathing on a Ezekiel Barco. That was going to be a foul. And then Kevin Paredes basically gets um, a, a shoulder check. That it was a hockey be, shoulder check. Yeah, A hockey shoulder check with an elbow maybe somewhere near the face. Uh, and the referee is oh, standing right there. For elbow, if that was in the NHL. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was definitely and, a minor penalty in the NHL. Yeah, and basically the referee being like, "Up, oh, looks fine there. I think we're good." I'm like, "Uh, no, that that was a foul." So that that definitely stood out. Um, I have it. I actually I kind of missed the Barco. Everybody was saying that wasn't a foul, um, but I kind of missed that. Uh, overall, I mean, I think it was subpar performance i thought he did a little bit better in the second half uh dc could consider themselves fortunate because he probably should have given a second yellow to uh to um to fred brilliant after he uh he basically uh, denied an attacking opportunity and i i think uh i do think that maybe dc we'll talk a little bit about the uh i think the second goal they gave up or the one of the maybe it was the third goal um but i i think that maybe should have been included dc hey He's not calling. He's not giving second yellows on stopping attacking opportunities. Maybe we should take advantage of that. Um, so, yeah, I think the goal you're thinking about there was the third one where we kind of yeah. got dribbled out of our shoes for a bit there. And I, I, I honestly was sitting there going, "Well, we can't exactly touch the guy because we've shown the precedent of the game has been if we touch someone, we're going to get a foul. So, what really can we do to defend uh, somebody as technical as I believe it was? Um, well, Bello scored it. Um, maybe it was a Rujo. It was. was the person who dribbled everyone out of their socks. So, yeah. Um, and, and that's, that's more a testament to Atlanta's very technical based roster compared to DC's roster, which still has the, uh, the, the very much large, the very large remnants of Benny ball attached to it still. Um, one thing I did notice about, and this is a game for everybody. I, I did, I did come up with a small little game here. Because I saw that um, quite a few center backs were getting a lot of stick in various channels and, 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 out, and outlets um, for their plays this season and, and overall in their career. So I thought I'd come up, I'd get their stats off of foot mob, and this I'd give you three good. anonymous DC United center backs. And you're going to try to tell me which one is Donovan Pine. Okay? All right. <laughs> so center back A, and the, the stats I'm using here are pass accuracy, dribble success, tackle success, and overall foot mob rating. Okay? okay? Center back A, his pass accuracy is 81%, his dribble success is 67%, his tackle success is 65%, and his overall foot, foot mob rating is 7.49. Center back B has a pass accuracy of 82%, a dribble success of 80%, a tackle success of 62%, and an overall foot mob rating of 7.14. And then center back C has a pack a- pass accuracy of 77%, does not have a dribble success stat, either so this a, center back that's has not zero dribbles <laughs> or has not been successful on any of them, has a tackle success of 50% and an overall foot mob rating of 6.39. Ooh. Which one is Donovan Pines? People in the chat, tell me, which one do you <laughs> think is Donovan Pines? A, B, or C? Put it in the Give chat, it. guys. Can we get a can we get, can we get a pull up producer? Can we, can we can we do something like that? I don't know if we can get that up that quickly. Um, I, but uh, here's here's my here's my hypothesis. I, I will I will I'll go backwards. I think C is Briant. I think B is Alfaro, and I think A is Pines. Uh, Foot Mob loves Donovan Pines. Yeah, he, he's been man of the match multiple times when he has played, and I think his sample size is smaller, so I think that may lean to it. We'll we'll find out. Uh, I, I think I, I think a I, I think you're right about a I, the pack ass the, the pass accuracy thing was what I was kind of like well he does do that a lot but that's definitely uh, uh, Mr. Andy Nahar I, I would say all right tell us what's up go off mute all right guys so I will I'll, I'll let you know um, who Donovan Pines is last but I'll tell you that a is Andy Nahar. So he wow. leads the team in – he's the leader of the team in foot mob rating with a 7.5. And um, he's a quite quite good defensively. He's one of the best defenders we have in terms of tackle success, um, which is great. And, and yeah. you see that in the game. Um, 
And I'll tell you that C is Steve Birnbaum. Hmm. Donovan Pines is B. Yeah, he has an go. 82% pass accuracy and an 80, 80% dribble success rate. Good, good job. Uh, good job to, to producer Brian to get the graphic up here and real quickly. <laughs> yeah. But I be, mean, I, I feel like Birnbaum is sort of hosed by uh, he's, he's got sort of an incomplete grade for the year. I think he's probably got maybe like three starts, maybe, maybe four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he, and he came off the bench. He came off the bench against Atlanta. I don't even know if he got counted for a rating. Right. But you know, everybody's major complaint about Donovan Pines is his inability to distribute the ball and, how he really can't handle the ball when it's at his feet. But it's very clear by some numbers and most metrics that he's very accurate with his passing and he's very successful when he wants to dribble. Yeah, I I I I push back a lot on on Donovan Pines, I think. I feel like he had a moment in the Chicago game or he had a moment recently. I obviously he had the moment against New York. Uh, but I mean, in this game, even the team gives up uh, three goals. I can't really point to him as a factor in those goals. We'll get into who the who the main factor was, maybe in those in in those goals and what happened. But I mean, he really wasn't a fact, and he really uh, ca- he comes in with some really timely tackles when he. I mean, all the physical traits are there for him. I just think the the mental sort of the mental side of the game, sort of cleaning up that game. Uh, is maybe going to take some time. I, I don't know if he'll ever be national team quality, or maybe if he'll ever if he'll ever make make the jump to Europe. I don't know if that's if that's in the cards. Certainly not right now. Maybe not. Maybe not for a bit. But if he can sort of get that mental side of the game figured out, he could stop. You know, with the you know mental errors, really commit himself. I think he could be a real talent. Um, the physical attributes are all there. Hopefully, Bill Hamid doesn't keep punching him in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> when he uh, messes up and lets goals go in. Angus, thanks so much for calling in, man. We really appreciate it. Yeah, of course, guys. Um, I'll post the uh, stats for Fred Briant in the chat because everybody Thank you. seems to be wondering what those are now. Yeah. yeah. There you go. I think, right, I think we should make this. Thank Have you, Angus. I think, I think we should make this a regular feature uh, yeah. of, uh, of DC United. Who Who's that player? I, I, would, I would bet you that Andy is top three in dribbles completed on the team. I would bet. I would. I would bet that highly. Bet yeah. that highly. And he was missing. And and let's get into the. Let's get. Yep. Into, so Andy. Andy went ninety. I think against against Chicago. Um, I think there were some of us that were like, maybe we should take him out. Maybe we should rest him because I think there's there's now a a coming sort of realization of kind of just how important he is to this team. And and uh, it was it was it was again it was it was kind of evident against. Uh, Against Atlanta, but let's 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 get into maybe a deeper dive into that game. Yeah, uh, let's let's talk a little bit, John. What were some of your? It was a loss, but what were some of your thoughts on the game? Uh, well, I think you can't. For we got, I, I'm gonna have to start with DC's goals. Yeah, because both of them were bananas. Uh, Felipe coming back from the dead, basically, and I the the goal meant so much to him. Clearly, he I think I think he knows that he has been sort of written off by fans maybe by the team a little bit i feel like he thinks he's got a lot of soccer in his legs um who knows it's a deep position on the team uh, moses nyman can't find the field right now so uh defensive midfielder is a is a crowded spot for for dc but his goal his technique on that goal was was crazy very very great goal and then edison flores scores a dp level goal uh mm-hmm. is a is a five million dollar transfer fee level goal that he scored uh, but he was in fact fantastic for all the minutes he was put on him. And, and yep. I, I, I'm going to start with that. Uh, you can, you, I think Angus alluded to this too, about sort of lineup choices uh, that were made that maybe dictated the way the game went a little bit in the first half. But Flores was built for this game based on the way he played in the second half. Uh, he immediately made an effect on the game. Yeah. Uh, I think he had another opportunity to, um, I mean, let, let's be clear. I, I think DC had several opportunities in this game. Um, obviously, Obviously, they had the the point blank header uh, from Russell Knauss that was saved. Uh, that first half, you know, I, I think we we talk about this game. I'm not so. I, I think if DC walks out with a draw, we're not really talking about the the lineup choices. I, I think we we can maybe have an argument about Juice Gundrich versus. Um, versus Anyone. versus Edison Flores. <laughs> yes, um, we, that that's kind of the main point of contention because Reyna wasn't there. Uh, Albia wasn't there. Something to watch. There were there were a lot of players that just did not travel, um, and that was interesting. 
they're not Hernan said that there were some things that happen are going to stay in the locker room. I don't know if Albia seems like the the kind of the the main suspect, I guess, in that regard. I would hope that Reyna wouldn't be a part of that, but that was brought up in the post game. I think Burn Burn it was alluded that Burnbaum was at issue also during the week. That's why he didn't start. There was a question about why he didn't start. He came on for Brian because Brian had a yellow card and was wiling out and almost got a second one. So I think you know I like that they don't air the dirty laundry here. Um, we're not reporters per se, right? Like we don't. We're not. We're not on the beat, so like we're not going to run it down. But uh, you know, he had the opportunity to sort of throw those players on the bus. They did not. If it was in fact disciplinary for Abela, that sucks because the team is, is continues to be paper thin there. Right? Nigel Roberta has the worst hamstring strain in in human history. Unfortunately, uh, I, ugh, bad just bad timing for the guy you bring in. Your only transfer fee who has. Uh, scar tissue in his hamstring plays like three games scores a scores a banger on the road yeah was that new york city that he scored I, that goal? I, I, yeah it was in new york city it was in in red bull arena um i i don't think you bring on i think this is a game if, if even for birth is questionable you kind of hold kind of hold him back um i think you're looking i think you're looking at two crucial um home games coming up where i think you're going to see every piece everyone's going to get an opportunity where bertha um, Edison Flores. He hasn't made the 18. Point. Nigel, yeah. Nigel is potentially still not available, but I just meant, I just meant Abila. If it was that reason, that's a bold choice for a coaching perspective. There was no forward to come on. Griffin. Yao was the option yeah. who, by the way, was very good in a limited cameo. The yeah. man, he, 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 when given the task, I think to not really play two way and just be like, Griffin attack the goal. Yeah. You, you're, that that's all you're doing here. Don't worry about playing defense. I want you to to dribble at the goal every time. And he did damn well. I was I was happy to see that. Yeah, and and I think let's. I want to circle back the conversation to to uh, to to sort of Drew Scundridge because I think he was the person of most ire. I I think the way that Ernan approached this game, I think he he I think he went a little more defensive, a little less creativity. His idea was. Uh, was we're going to kind of sit back in a little bit of a low block. We're going to absorb pressure. We're going to try to break on the attack, win on the press. Uh, and they, you know, we're going to rely on Julian Gressel and uh, Kevin Paredes to sort of, you know, be some sort of creative force in the center. And and, and I, I did say I would talk about Kevin Paredes, uh, but, but Kevin Paredes showed an ability to whip the ball in in this game. And I think that is something that maybe is kind of missing from his game. He has the dribble ability, but sort of the idea, he kind of gets it in the final third and either he gets taken down for a foul and wins a penalty, which can be good. Um, you know, can win a free kick opportunity or he, uh, or you kind of see him, you know, maybe make the wrong decision. So his ability to sort of recognize when to whip the ball in, I think was, was pretty good. Uh, but, but talking about, talking about, uh, Drew, Drew Scundrich, um, you know, we've been big fans, I think, of Drew on the show. I think a lot of fans, he's maybe, the if, if there really isn't any player, I think, that's dr- drawn any anger or any upsetness now. Um, I, I don't think that really exists. It's hard to find one. Maybe Kempen, but I think Kempen's... Yes, it's, Kempen, yeah, it's him. It's John Kempen. I, that, that's maybe not fair. But I, I would say, I, I would say there's no player on the field, but I would say the, the field player... Uh, on the field that has really dr- drawn as much as in, much ire. But I think Drew Scundrich is kind of becoming a candidate because he is uh, keeping Edison Flores off the field. Um, and I think, I, I think I, I like to think that, cause I, I was wondering, is that Edison Flores going to start this game? Um, God, I think he should. And he didn't play a lot. I thought maybe this was an opportunity. He for was starting start. in an in international break for Peru. So it's not yeah. about, it's not about fitness. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what it is. What it is. I don't know if he just thinks he he's got his horses now. He's got a starting eleven. Um, I think after this game, he's made a good a good case, and and I hope that you know Lasada sees that. Now again, is Reina back? You know, Kamara start. You know, then you're suddenly getting into questions of, you know, do you bench Moreno or Reina? Or sorry, uh, Ariola or Reina? Maybe Ariola. Certainly not Reina because how how uh, how Jordi Reina's looked. Yep. Um, but I, which is I a think, wild thing to say right now. By I, the I way. think he, I, I do. I, yeah, I, it is wild. I do think he gets a start. Um, I think you're going to have two games coming up, obviously both at home. Um, I think both those games are, I think you give them the start in Cincinnati and, and say, Hey, this is a game against a weaker opponent. The floor is yours. Go show, show me, show me something incredible. Show me something that's going to make me like really consider you, um, down the road. 
Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens there. But um, as far as as far as Drew Scundridge, I thought he did an OK job. I don't think he did. He, he was asked to do a role that was very difficult in that he can. In that he can, he was he was supposed to push forward. He was supposed to push back. He was supposed to do a lot of things that I think um, that well, I, that I think were were very difficult. And he was asked to do a lot, and he doesn't have that creative ability. Um, and for the first half, it seemed like it was still working. Like what Lasada was doing, DC controlled a lot of that game and, and generated the more opportunities. I don't like him as an eight. I don't. I, yeah. do, I do not think that that is. But he's played there, and he's played. He's filled. I think when he's had more success, he was more of a six. He was one of the two. It was one of the two defensive midfielders, and I think he's much better there. His range of passing isn't very good, um, but you know, we've said this now a number of times. Uh, he doesn't make generally. He does not. He does not give the ball up in dangerous situations. He will not put the team in trouble. I just think that for the position of the field where he is at, at an eight, we need a little bit more from him, and that's why I think it's reasonable for people to say, you know. Uh, Maybe we don't need him on the field here, but, uh, you know, I, I think there are, I think we have bigger problems with, uh, you know, selection. I think selection is the thing we really got to think about for, for those players who are, uh, you know, who are sort of expected to deliver more. Maybe you, maybe you risk them, right? Maybe unless the goal was, and he said that it wasn't, we didn't go in there and they didn't play like it really. We didn't go in there for a, a one, one draw or, or a nil, no draw. So you can't say that Drew was on the field just to neutralize, but I, I I just think based on the way Flores played, unless it's something about, you know, he doesn't think that he can give him 75 minutes of two way play uh, and that he's better just throwing 20 minutes at the end going all, you know, all gas, no breaks, maybe. But I, I think that uh, you got to see what you got with him. We talked about it before. This is th- this is decision time. And maybe you're going to keep him next year anyway because of his contract. But like, I think you got to know can he fit the system uh, in the way that you need him to? And right now, this is, you talked about it. These games at home are crunch time and you've got to beat the brakes off FC Cincinnati. You, there's no, that, that you can't drop points again on this game at home. So yeah, no, you gotta, crucial. you gotta come out and win. You gotta come out and win. Um, certainly. So, I mean, I'd be, I'd be curious to see what happens with, with Flores once he gets a start. Um, Eric wants to come on the show. He wants to talk Kevin Paredes and Russell Knauss. Eric, you're on the line. What's up, man? The floor is yours. Hey, hey, uh, just calling in to say uh, welcome back. Glad to see you. Glad to hear you. Um, and <laughs> you. Uh, last Wednesday at the Fire game um, brought uh, my best friend to his first game in quite a while. Um, and he had a lovely time. Um, I, I, I stand in the rowdier section. Um, so, you know, it was <laughs> tempestuous for him, but uh, he had a good time. Um, and a 3 nothing, you know, when we'll do that. Um, Interestingly enough, my parents who don't watch games really <laughs> decided like, hey, we'll watch to see if Eric's on TV. Um, <laughs> and uh, my mom said to me, who's that Paredes? Who, who's, who's that kid? Um, uh, does he play for the United States national team? And I was like, yeah, yeah he could if he, <laughs> if, if, if he gets called up. Um, and, and, and I just want to say, like, I mean, I, 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 we all knew he had this ability, he had this talent, um, and I'm just I, – I, consistently I'm impressed. As someone who's seen a lot of soccer in my life, consistently I'm impressed with his, his willingness to, to battle, um, his willingness to uh, run the full 90, right? So, like, there's a certain, uh, certain caliber of player who can play uh, what, what is asked of Gressel, what is asked of uh, uh, Paredes. Um, and I think that he's been doing a spectacular job, um, especially later in the game. And you guys were alluding to earlier when um, Flores uh, came on for Skundrich. Um, I... I think Skundrich gets a lot of flack. I don't think he's a, he's the best uh, choice for DC. I do I do wish we saw Edison Flores more often, um, but I also don't think he deserves as much uh, hate as he gets sometimes, at least on online anyway, um, in the DC United fandom. Um, but once uh, like last like what like twenty minutes, uh, uh, I was just really impressed with the amount of energy, the amount of uh, fight that the team gave. Um, one player who I thought. Uh, and and I, I don't know if I'm crazy. Please tell me if I'm crazy or thinking this. Um, maybe I just didn't watch the same game as everybody else, but I thought Knaus, uh might not fit exactly what the team's doing. So he's a good destroyer. He, he's good to come in and, 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 and stop plays, break up uh, uh, attacking plays from other, the opposing team. But I, I don't see him 
as qu quite as, as as quick on the distribution end, as as as, as snappy with his passes, as able to read um, where the attacking play and transition coming from United is going. Um, Again, I might be, just be crazy. I, I love Knauss. I love his ability to, to do all those things I said, to, to be that destroyer there in the midfield. Um, but I don't know. Is, am, I, am I just insane? Like, I think he might be one of the players. And again, the whole back line needs to be reevaluated over the offseason. Um, yep. I mean, Nahar obviously is having a resurgence, but how long can we, you know, hold on to him for? Like, he's... God bless him. He's he, he, he's older than me now, so <laughs> um, I mean, no, he has been. But yeah, there. Uh, I would say that he is uh, certainly not at the heights he was at the beginning of the season. I think that that he was a, he was a can't drop key pivotal player for the first I don't know five or six games of the season. I think he was probably one or two on the team sheet the way he was playing. He's had a lot of personal issues. He had he had you know a family a, yeah, yeah, like a course, family course, tragedy. Of course, of course, of course. So I, I I think he's not I think he's not back to full speed I I think that, that I think that's weighing on him I, I couldn't say but like he's not he's not where he was at the beginning of the year he did not have a great game foot mob agrees with you for, for whatever that's worth uh, the defensive midfielder pairing was pretty null uh, for the game uh, but you know I, I would like to uh, Moses Nyman has has gone like I already said not necessarily gone missing but he he's not he's not at the top of the, of the chart anymore so I'm hoping. That Canals uses FC Cincinnati's uh, pretty anemic attack to sort of build some confidence and, and be more be more contributing to the uh, to the offense in a way he hasn't been the last couple of games. I just want to be able to laugh at Lucho rolling on the ground instead of feel exasperated <laughs> by it. Uh, I, I gotta I gotta tell you I gotta tell you there there are I, I saw an interesting interesting post that Cincinnati fans are making. And I couldn't help but get kind of a, a similar that I think they're starting to realize the same things that I think I've I've realized about about DC when he was here and his tenure here. They're saying, yeah, OK, so when he's out there, he's a good player. Like he, he makes our team better. But like he has like one or two moments of like brilliance, like maybe every other game and like 90 like all over like five or six moments of just pure frustration that just make you like realize like maybe the team needs to figure something else out. Uh, but right now you need him in there if you want anything, because there's nothing else left in that team. So I'll be curious to see. watch him, watch him drop, watch him drop like a Hattie on us or something. I don't know. Maybe that happens. Oh God. <laughs> there's a lot of, there's a lot of hate here in the chat for some Lucha. I'm uh, interesting to see how, how, uh, what the response will be. I don't think I'll be in, in the house, but if I would, I, you guys know what I would be doing. It, yeah. Eric, any, any, anything else you want to drop, man? Um, uh, I don't know if you guys have been following Bill Hamid's Twitter. Um, I do, and uh, <laughs> you he's know, back on I his game. Say, he's back I, on his I game. Love, <laughs> I love the amount of of just drive, uh, uh, vitriol, um, and and energy he brings to the team, regardless of whether or not the rest of the league <laughs> sees eye to eye with him. Uh, anyway, thank you all, and uh, have a good night. Okay, you too. You too, man. Yeah, um, I'm so so. Uh, there's still some lucha love, and I understand that. I I, I certainly do. Um, I think DC's better off personally. I, I think they are better off w without without Luciano Acosta on this team. And this is a guy who who loved him in 2018 and what he did for this club and and everything. But I I would take I would not trade a single one of the players out here on this field, including Drew Scundridge for Luciano Acosta. Oh, you're no. wowing. Uh, I'm not wowing. I'm not wowing. I'm not wilding. Uh, can we get a uh, poll in the chat? Is Ted wilding? <laughs> Drew Scundridge for Lucho, straight up, no salary cap uh, repercussions. Would you make the deal? I feel like no. I, I would not. I would not make Oof. that deal. I would not make that deal. Oof. But uh, but I, I'll tell you. I tell you. I, I don't think Lucho is going to be long in uh, in Cincy, and I'm Probably not sure not. where he. I'm not sure where he goes from here because uh, I'm not sure any other MLS team is going to be willing. He he he's gonna have to accept a draft. Maybe that's how he comes back to DC if he accepts a drastically lower salary. Salary though, knowing Lucho, not his um, thing. Doesn't do yeah. that. I I will say I, I I what I could see happening is if he man someone manages to convince him to come get on a lower salary, he goes to a team where he doesn't have to be the man, and suddenly he plays really well because he's not because that's what he's expected to do. It was what he was expected to do in DC, and it's what he was expected to do in Cincy, and that's I just, why I think you know expectations. 
I just realized I accidentally voted wrong on the poll. It should say, oh, yay. I do. I do want to trade Skundridge for Lucho. So if the poll loses by one, you, you, uh, you messed better, up. You better hope Andy Sullivan doesn't hear you talk about that. Listen. Andrew Skundris, friend of the friend of the show. Her and Rose see. Lavelle would love a Cincinnati team if that happened. Uh, I think are the women playing right now. Is that happening? Are we missing that? That's tomorrow. It's okay. Tomorrow. We're not missing yeah. it then. That's good. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any other big, I mean, we got Cincinnati. We already sort of alluded to that here with this, with the Lucho talk. Uh, I think that I'm trying to think their last, uh, the last, <laughs> here's their most recent performance. Just so we have a, an idea of the level of, of stinkiness. Uh, two, one uh, against New York city four nil by Atlanta beat Toronto two nothing, which is, uh, try harder, guys. Uh, you can do better than that. Uh, one nothing lost to Miami. Three two lost to Columbus. Four one lost to New England, and then some draws, and then four Let, four draws in a row. Did Did you watch? Did you watch the speaking of Toronto? Did you watch the Toronto Miami game? Did you Did you witness that at all? I I saw the scuttlebutt after the end about the the penalty in the in the ninetieth. Yeah, it was so. The, the it wasn't just the penalty. Toronto scored a goal. They absolutely scored a goal, but the the referee the assistant referee with the way the goalkeeper's dying the assistant referee was shielded from the ball they went to var and still did not call go go watch that replay the ball the the keep the ball the, it's almost a wide open net the keeper dives back like punches it out but it's very evident that the ball crossed the line how mls mls integrating you know goal you know var how the heck do you not have a a camera inside the goalpost, each goalpost for VAR. Every game should have that. Toronto are cursed. Let me just tell you, Toronto are absolutely 100% cursed. How much can a GoPro really cost, right? It's got to be cheap <laughs> enough now. You just strap it on there, tape well, some it. Games, some games do. I mean, remember, well, I, and, and I should say that, I remember there was a Portland game where they did have the goal. They had the ball in the goal line and uh, they did not call it. Um, they did not, uh, they did not give DC a goal, even though fans all over the area thought they should have, they should have had it. So, uh, yeah, I don't know, but, uh, but it was, but it was interesting. It was, it was hilarious to watch. And it clearly, if, if that isn't a backbreaker for the rest of the season for Toronto, I don't know what is because you were this close to registering a win and just to watch it just all fall apart, um, at the end. So someone sold their soul to get that, that points record. <laughs> Thank you. Canadian ch- yeah. Someone sold their soul. That's the only, the only thing I can get, I can get into it. <laughs> oh, I thought I'm sorry. I thought you were referring to the fact that the poll for uh, trading Lucho for uh, Drew Skendrich uh, won 68 to two because uh, that's fine. <laughs> one of our viewers that's used fine. a whole bunch of channel points because you can vote over and over again <laughs> with, with channel points. So thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> we, we should do more polls. Well, you know, that's fine. Pe- people can have their people can have their opinions and people can be wrong, too. So you know, it's fine. It's too true. Uh, we would talk to you about the spirit game, uh, but there there was there was no spirit game. There theoretically is one Sun, I think Sunday at yeah. Segra, so I'll let you know if I am there and there's a game. I'll, uh, I'll 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 tweet about it. I'll make sure you guys know that there's a game. If it exists. <sighs> yeah, it was actually it was a quiet it was quiet on the spirit front mostly. Yeah, mostly this quiet. week I don't think there have been. Please remind us in the chat if we're wrong. <laughs> uh, we may have missed one. I'm trying to think. There was, uh, I think the only heat was the statement that came out about about the forfeit. Mm-hmm. I guess from Ben. Yeah, which is I still can't get over that. By the way, that's still that's still crazy to me from like a mental adjustment. Like, oh, okay, cool, Ben. That's that's coming from Ben now. Uh, about, about sort of like you know, it's still or they're in the same position where uh, where they can't necessarily force the players to get vaccinated, and there's still some players yeah. that are just not doing it. Yep, there are uh, there there were two people from the communications department who have left. Um, and, One of them was working for the Red Sox, so great for her. Big, that's a that's a huge promotion. So that, yeah, that seems like a maybe one was at least a promotion situation, but you know that can that can kind of force people to make changes. Uh, so I think the one going to the Red Sox, who knows about the other one? Um, this is it's 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 incredibly it's depressing. It's depressing, and I was like, I was actually thinking, I was like, man, we like we maybe we don't have to talk about the spirit because it's just you so much hope and promise about this team is just completely gone up in flames. They still could make the playoffs. I mean, that's still certainly a possibility. Um, I don't know how, how you as players come back from this. Um, the, I guess the other news that sort of broke with this was, it was actually confirmed what the situation was as to why uh, they got hit on those COVID violations. It was actually a player uh, apparently had traveled, didn't tell anybody 
and then came and then came back. Uh, so almost makes the uh, the the whole um, story that came out, we'll call it that, uh, almost seem even worse because it was clearly not the reason as to as to why this was why this why this happened. So, well, you know, I, I think we should all just follow the rest of Chris Russell's spirit coverage now that he is. You know, a a, a, be, a you know a spirit a spirit writer. So he will I mean, never we will never hear him tweet what? anything about the team again unless but he it comes has such to good rec- sources. I know. Well, I mean, he's got Steve Baldwin, so yes. apparently that's a good source. But I mean, I guess not a reliable one. No. Um. But uh, I, I mean, I, I I kept I keep hoping. I was like, well, it's been quiet, so I'm like, well, maybe maybe we're gonna like maybe we're going to hear something that's going to like actually break good. And this is all kind of going to be over. So I think I the know. other, the other thing to uh, spirit related is uh, Jason Anderson's quote that he got from Andy Sullivan about sort of being like, Oh, it's uh, normally your, uh, the national team games are and practices are much more stressful than your club situation. Uh, but not this time, not now. <laughs> so happy to be playing here for the national team, by the way, uh, Say what you will about these games against Paraguay, and I don't know how beneficial they are from a uh, really any perspective whatsoever. But it got Andy on the field and let Andy score a banger, and could have scored multiple bangers. And and you know I think the the challenge here is you know from our Twitter universe we're very spirit heavy and DC centric, but it seems like the universe is starting to really understand that she needed to be on the she needed to be at the Olympics. She needs to be on the roster going forward. Vlatko needs to have a six with her skill set, if not starting, at least available for selection in any of these matches. Yeah, and I think it's you know we, we talked a bit. You know, obviously this the the, the player that got the headlines uh, was obviously Carly Lloyd scoring five goals. I think it was. <laughs> yep, probably. Uh, just, just they just left her on the field too. Um, but I I think the real story is you're seeing players get sort of back into the team. Obviously Andy Sullivan, uh, Mallory Pugh. Made, made sort of a reappearance. So I think it was the it, ghost of spirits past. I think yeah, it, Arnab, pretty much. It, it really was. It really was. And it makes you um, a little bit upset mm-hmm. about, about all that. But, uh, but I, I think it's important. It, it's good to, it's good to see that there is a recognition that we need to, you know, get some new blood into this team, uh, get some different, get some different players, get some breeze and life. And, you know, Paraguay is not a, not a, not a world beater. They have never uh, made they, the world cup. Yeah, they got pretty much roundly beaten. And I think we can also argue, um, you know, the usefulness of playing them as sort of a national team. Um, I will say there are there was some good news, I guess, on the women's front. I don't know if we've covered it, uh, but there is talk there is going to be a uh, the Women's World Cup qualifying. They're actually, I think, going to have a full on like World Cup qualifying uh, international like tournament. And there's going to be like a sort of a women's version of the Gold Cup. Um, so. Very, very good to see. Should have happened. Uh, good to see. You know, Concacaf at least have a you know a women's competition that can actually get you know get their get other teams more minutes more than the U.S. Uh, you know, can also help grow Mexico, um, which I I have to say, look out for them. Um, I, I think they're going to be good at some point. I think they're they're on a growth path um, with that league, and they're really starting. They really are starting to invest in Liga Liga MX Femel. It's actually pretty fun to watch. Um, so. Uh, that's all good to hear. It's all good to hear. Um, apparently, Concacaf also is going to make an announcement tomorrow with MLS and Liga MX. Not sure what that's about. John Arnold dropping that. I don't know if you had a chance to see that. No, I don't know. I don't know what that what that entails. I know they've already announced in uh, the expanded. Um, I'm wondering if it's if it's we're going to actually do this like now, like we're just going to do it. <laughs> you think? So? Yeah, we're not just, we're not good. We're not going to wait around for 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 2023. Just on a Tuesday, just on a Tuesday afternoon. Like, all right. One league, yep, <laughs> it's happening. Sorry, guys. Uh, I don't. I, I, well, I'm saying I, I think I my my projection is they are going to say we are going to do. They, they they've already talked about the expanded Concacaf Champions League, uh, having like 24 teams, like a bunch of. I, I think the announcement. My projection because they've also invited the Central American, and uh, I think the Caribbean confederations as well. Oh, my great. projection is they are saying we're actually doing this next year. This Good. is happening next year. So let us um, in it. I don't know what whatever whatever weird qualification you need to have for DC United to be qualified for it. Uh, that's what I want. I'll, I'll buy that ticket package add on. I remember I used to do that. So I, uh, at RFK in, in the old days when we were allowed to play in, in Champions League, you bought your season ticket and then you bought your Champions League strip on top of it. 
for mm-hmm. like not all any money because no one went to those games. <laughs> but man, I will do it. I will commit right now. DC United, do you want my extra money? Get somehow cheat your way into the Champions League. Maybe there's like some like injury suffered like exemption we can get into there. Like a you know like a fair play award or whatever. We'll do that. But like man games lost by injury. DC United gets qualified into 2022 Champions League. Or we could, uh, or we could just go out and win the MLS. Or we Cup. could just win the damn thing. That's yep, another thing we could do. Win. All right, y'all. I think that's going to, uh, I think that's going to do it for the show. Unless John, you have anything else you want to drop? Yep. Uh, make sure you resubscribe here uh, yep. on Twitch if you are watching us live. If you're not watching us live and listening to the podcast uh, on Tuesday, and you want to figure out how to do that, uh, I'll, I'll DM me. I'll show you how to do it. But yeah, just go to just go to just go to Twitch and use your Amazon Prime sub or just use a regular sub. You could also um, uh, join our Patreon. Uh, for when we start doing second episodes again i'm i'm now feeling energized i'm uh, this was good this this break off was good now i'm ready to rock again <laughs> uh and then also uh just for uh the ability to share things because i have a, me and ted have a show uh this is my this is my piece of art recommendation somehow i'm sure everyone's seen this because it's old and i was actually talking with producer brian about it before the show uh go watch uh inside by bo burnham on netflix if you haven't already i love it to death I listen to the songs as if it were like a Hamilton soundtrack. I'm like one of those guys. So uh, it's great. Check it out. I used to do I used to do a, a, a playlist every week, but that got too hard and no one listened to it. But that's this. That's my version of this on the show. <laughs> go go watch that. It's an hour and a half. You'll you'll thank me. Ted, do you have any do you have any uh, recommendations of, uh, of media oh, besides video game? Tell tell the people to watch, play the video game again. You love that. Yeah, no, I, I, I just beat it. It, it was oh. wonderful. I've already told people to play Psychonauts too. Definitely do that. Um, support, support, support content that needs to be supported. Um, fun, fun games. I don't know if I have like any other media, I guess that I am like, that I'm enjoying. Uh, actually I will, I'll go, we'll go ahead and plug. Uh, if you want people who watch this game more technically, I can give you actual, like, uh, I would call it like more d- uh, detailed analysis. Go check out MLS assist. They actually talk about, uh, they actually talk about the DC, uh, Atlanta game in depth. And they actually don't just uh, talk about how good Atlanta is. And like the Univision commentators acting like uh, Atlanta was dominating that game. They actually give some nuance and give DC some credit. So it was, it was cool to see. That's so a go good show that every week, but oh, much yeah. better when they're talking about DC United. So yep. Yep. Always good. When they're Reward them with a spike in numbers. Yes. Give the RFK well, refugees get, bump. <laughs> get, 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 listen to them and don't listen to MLS extra time. Don't listen to Andrew. Weeby. There we go. That's the thing. <laughs> they don't need your, they don't just, need your listens. Just kidding. Everybody. Andrew, Weeby. Andrew, Weeby. extra time radio is still a fun show to listen to. Um, when you, when you, when you have nothing else to listen to. All right, uh, guys, I think that's going to do it. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, you guys are legends. We love you. Twitter.com, RFK Refugees. Subscribe on Twitch. Do it. Help us out. We love we love to do this show. Um, and we appreciate all the support you guys give us. We will catch you guys uh, probably next Monday. Vamos. Vamos. Vamos.